Welcome back to Limitless Recap. Today, I will show you an action, side drama film from 2020. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins on May 9th in the apartment of former Delta Force Captain Roy Pulver, Frank Grillo. He awakens in bed next to Alice, Annabelle Wallace, who screams and flees as Roy is attacked with a machete by a man. Roy plays out the entire scenario, dodging the hitman's precise motions to defend himself and grumbling that it has become tiresome. After the first assassin is mistaken for Roy, a second assassin aboard a helicopter flying overhead fires a machine gun, killing the first assassin. While the second shooter rounds indiscriminately into the flat, Roy simply slumps against the couch and stares at a photo of his ex-girlfriend Gemma Wells, Naomi Watts. Roy climbs onto a sand truck as the helicopter smashes through the window, claiming it took him 22 attempts to land correctly. He then kidnaps a man while evading two more assassins, Pam, Meta Williams, and Esmeralda, respectively, Armida Lopez. Roy swerves recklessly towards an approaching vehicle, collides with it, and dies after flying through the window. Roy goes on to explain through narration that he has already died 140 times because he has to live the same day every day. The problem is that no matter how many assassins he avoids, more appear. Wan Yin, Selena Lo, in addition to the previous four, is a swordswoman who always identifies herself and admits what she has done after beheading Roy. I am Guan Yin, and Guan Yin has done this. The dwarf Aaron Bielner, also known as Kaboom, earned the nickname due to his use of explosives while pursuing Roy. After impaling him with harpoons, he is dragged through the water by Roy too. Eric Edabari, and Smiley, Michael Torek. During Attempt 48, Roy attempted to contact Gemma at her workplace, but her supervisor Colonel Clive Ventor answered the phone, Mel Gibson. Roy is aware of Gemma's death, but he claims it was an accident. He is then attacked and blown up by two men he refers to as the German twins, Quinton Jackson and Rashid Evans. After one failed attempt in which he blows up Pam and Esmeralda in a warehouse, he goes to a diner and orders two large bottles of beiju from his bartender friend, Jake Ken Jong. He also constantly listens to another patron, Dave Shion McKinney. Droning on about tedious anecdotes, which causes Roy to drunkenly say something stupid because he's lost interest. He also notices Dai Feng Michelle Yeo, a woman who always appears at the same time. Roy observes that he has never lived past 12.47 p.m. because the assassins always find him. Roy recalls May 8th, which seems like a long time ago. He went to see Gemma at her workplace, Dino, where she mentioned how their son Joe, Rio Grillo, who doesn't even know Roy is his father and only sees him as Gemma's friend, doesn't have him in the picture. She is working on a massive device that can manipulate space and time but has the potential to destroy the planet if misused. Venter's goon Brett, Will Sasso, emerges from surveillance as the two watch Roy and Gemma. As Brett accepts Roy's resume, Ventor remarks that someone like Roy could figure out what they're planning. Before Roy leaves, Gemma reminds him to keep Osiris in mind. Later, Roy goes to the bar and meets up with another bartender friend, Gabrielle, and runs into Alice, Matt Hill Olivier. While Alice is using the restroom, he receives a call from Gemma informing him that she may need to take drastic measures. When Roy examines a book titled The Mythology of Isaac and Osiris, which Gemma sent him a few days before the ninth, he is reminded of Osiris. In it, Gemma advises Roy to enjoy life to the fullest and to remember that time waits for no man. Attempt 143 After noticing Joe taking something from another child, Roy follows him to an underground arcade. Joe is present. When Roy confronts him, Joe claims he skipped class to attend a video game tournament and was only trading cards with the other boy. Roy is saddened to have to break the news that Gemma has died while spending time with Joe. When they leave the arcade, Roy notices that it is now 12.50, indicating that he has survived longer than before. Unfortunately, more assassins arrive to murder him, but he shields Joe from their bullets. He tells Joe that he is his father as he dies, adding that he wishes that was the last death. Roy is aware that he is being followed because they were unable to locate him underground previously. At the restaurant, he tries to remove the tracker from his anus until Dave suggests that it could be in one of his teeth. Roy pulls out two before locating the correct one, just before he is slain. After learning which tooth to extract, he avoids the first few hitmen and then loses the tracker. 
After being resurrected, he confronts Alice because he recalls her being present when he was drugged at the bar. She informs him that Brett is the one who installed the tracker. He extracts the tooth and uses it to lure Pam to a remote location, where he shoots her with her own rifle. He also lures Smiley, then murders him with his own harpoon and truck. Roy begins to pursue the other assassins, such as Roy II and the twins, but then focuses on Ventor and Brett. The first few times he is killed by Brett and Dino security, but he keeps getting closer until he confronts Guan Yin, who always decapitates him while dodging shots at these. Ventor informs him that Gemma's device is known as the Osura Spindle, and that he intends to use it to undo horrific historical events while eventually establishing himself as a global autocrat. After resetting, Roy receives assistance from Dai Feng, who teaches him how to use a sword. As a result, he advances and, in a duel, defeats Guan Yin. He turns to pursue Ventor after killing Brett, but Ventor stops him and asks who is guarding Joe. Roy arrives at the arcade to discover that Joe has passed away. Roy rushes there, but the Osura spindle explodes and wipes out everything. Roy restarts, but spends the next 15 attempts letting the man with the machete murder him because he believes it is pointless to try because everyone will die. After some time, he snaps out of his gloom and decides to spend his final moments with Joe. He takes him to the arcade, where they interact and bond over a variety of topics and pastimes for the first time as father and son. Joe always falls asleep just before the end of the world. Roy and Joe mentioned that Joe had received a voicemail from his mother earlier in the day during their conversation. This means Gemma will be awake when Roy wakes up. When he arrives at Dino, he realizes that Gemma's death is still at least 14 minutes away. He now has a strategy in place. Roy's next attempt is successful when he kills the man with the machete, boards the helicopter, expels the venman, and instructs the pilot to fly to Dino. He dispatches the guards, and when he sees the entire group of assassins approaching the door, he grabs a machine gun and shoots them all. After entering the main room, he murders Brett and Venter. Gemma discovers that the Osura spindle works as she expected. Roy recalls all of the times he has died and used his days to be with Joe. He is willing to enter the device despite his uncertainty about what will happen. He gives her one last reassuring look before entering. Roy reawakens on May 9 with the time loop broken. He grinned, knowing what he had to do but taking care not to die in the process.